what a show that was. I knew that freaking. We shall sing together for. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only. I am a hobo, Tom. Let me get my settings just dialed in here. I think. I think I have it set up. I'd like to welcome everyone back to my very, very weird week. Um. Let's see, yeah, I might as well start the show off because this is going to be a long show because for some reason there's a lot of notes. And when shows have a lot of notes, it means I'm not really watching the show. It means I am just taking notes, which is not necessarily good. Um, so let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, some newsworthy things. Oh, wait a second. As a, first, as always, Antonio Brown's brain. That's right, sir. You know what you like. And you, sir, always like to win by a six count. Um, let's see here. So a little stuff this week. Um, this is a very weird week for me. I have my three jobs this week. I did my one job today. I do two jobs tomorrow, two jobs Wednesday, two jobs Thursday. Then Friday, I'm gone for the whole day. Saturday, I'm gone for the whole day. Sunday, I don't know. That's going to be funky. I'm gonna play, we're going to play Sunday by year. I should be gone. I should be back in t plenty of time for the Royal Rumble. I honestly don't know. That's going to be weird. So sporadically, what's going to happen this week? Tomorrow, there will definitely be at least half of an Impact show. I'm probably going to get the main event in. And I'll have to work until 8.30. I'll be back by 9. I'll do my little strip tease for the ladies out there. Do the show. And then I have to go to the gym and then slurry you sleep. Wednesday. Oh, man. I might. I might skip AEW. Because it's going to be a taped show. 
If you don't find spoilers, I'm sure there's spoilers out there in the internet somewhere. Thursday, I'm going to invite probably Dr. Tom in. Actually, you know what? Iho del Hobo El Vagabundo has been pretty good with his predictions. He might come in. Thursday, do a quick little prediction show. Friday, I am not sure. I might make a SmackDown show. I almost don't want to, mainly because of the quality. Again, if you read that actual title, yes, it was that bad. And it started off god-awful. And I should be able to cover the Royal Rumble on Sunday. Don't quote me on that. This is a very hectic week. I know at least Saturday's a 14-hour workday for me. And that's never a good thing. Sunday it might Sunday it might be a long Sunday might be a long day too. And I have no clue what it's gonna be like on Friday. Chaos, folks. Chaos comes to Daytona Beach. But then the good news is probably either Monday or sometime that sometime the following week, that first week in February, there will be a bonus show. I'm going to show you, my YouTube audience, what it's like to be underneath the world's probably greatest racetrack, the Daytona 500, because that's where I work. You'll, you'll get to see some kind of behind the scene features about that. And I'm also going to show off my new race badge, because I was impressed with that. They gave me access to the infield, which means I can actually go up to the drivers, although, while, although why the drivers would want to talk to the one, the only Hobo Tom. Who knows? But that's probably neither here nor there. If I try to talk to the drivers, they probably kick me out and, and yeah, dock my pay. Who knows? But wait a second, that's way too much stuff going on. Let's talk about some Monday night. Raw? Oh boy. I'm just kind of tired. Uh, long day. Longer show to slog through. Uh, starts off Drew McIntyre. I suppose his COVID stuff. He like to thank you, the people, for supporting him. He said he got it, got over it. Now he's back in wrestling. He's all cleared by the doctors. Very good. The Miz and Morrison come in. They say, yeah, whatever. Uh, I don't even care. Then Gold, Goldberg, Goldberg, Oldberg showed up. And, yeah, that kind of somewhat ruined the show. I, I am still tweaking stuff. I think that's a pretty good sound. Yeah, that's better. It's like I have to figure out where to adjust stuff. But it was pretty good. Um, Goldberg showed up. Eventually, Goldberg speared. Goldberg speared Miz. And then Morrison ate the Claymore. And that was the end of that segment. What's so next? Oh. Why? I haven't seen a segment. There have been some pretty darn bad Raws. And every so often you get a stinker of a SmackDown. Nothing in a long while besides, besides a boo Sonya Deville segment was this bad. So the first match was Charlotte Flair and Shannon Baszler. It could have been... Good. It was a classic tie-up, the wrist lock. Um, Charlotte goes after. She takes a swipe at Nia Jax. Uh, Charlotte gets Shanna Baszler in a pinning configuration. Nia Jax runs in, drops the leg. No, no, no. We got ourselves a dusty, crusty piece of toast mat. Because of a dusty finish. Charlotte Flair wins, but only because of Nia Jax and a big booty leg drop. Um, yeah, it was a piece of toast. You want to make someone feel unimportant, have Nia, have Nia Jax interfere in the match and have her do the leg drop. Yeah, quick way to kill that match. And then uh, Shayna Baszler then began to beat up Charlotte. 
Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke came in, and then once Lacey Evans showed up, they went to break. Holla, 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 player! Yep, player, player! Uh, we're gonna have a three woman, a six, a six woman tag match. Yeah, not for the rumble. Cause I, I, I don't know. They didn't do any rumblish spots. Was this bad? So the next match was Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, and Lacey Evans take, taking on Charlotte Flair, Mandy Rose, and Dana Brooke. Woo! Lacey Evans, she looks like she stole part of Charlotte's wardrobe. And Kevin Dunn, you cheeky bastard, you keep on showing us caught shots of every female wrestler. Some are good, some are not so good. Some I just want to see something fall out of one day. It's happened. And Kevin Dunn will get it on film, by the way. So uh, Lacey Evans, she looks like sh she looks like a, a taller, older, bigger-breasted Charlotte Flair. No, that has weird daddy issues. I even I don't go there. Um, yeah, Mandy Rose, kind of for the most part. Puts Lacey a lot in the headlock. Again, very slow, drawn out match. Um, and Lacey. She, again, she looks like she stole Charlotte's stuff. She's not really that good. She eventually gets a tag. Then we have Baszler and Flair, part two. Pretty heavy on striking. Yeah, nothing much happens. Charlotte Flair. Woo! Does her chops, the follow slam, the kip up. It is good to see some of that. Uh, Mandy and Dana came in. They double team. Baszler. Again, they did their little like um, handspring stand kicks. That was pretty cool to see. Charlotte with the knees. Uh, Shayna eventually to Shayna. Shayna and Charlotte eventually trade blows. And then there's a count out. This, folks, is 100% guaranteed botch. And the reason why she got counted out. Charlotte, Charlotte Fair literally stood in the ring and said, huh? Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke like stared at each other like. Nia Jax looked confused. Lacey Evans just like was there. Oh, it can't, and, and I don't know. It was utterly ridiculous. So the the heels started to head back because literally Shannon Baser forgot to get in either at ten. She forgot the timing of it, or the ref. I, it's hard to blame the ref he, if he counts for ten, even though if, if like he, yeah, she got in like what she got in really a good half second after the ten. She, she like rolled in there. It's like, no, the referee's like, no, nah, it counts out. I do have some integrity. So I do applaud the WWE officials for having integrity. They follow the true rules of, re of professional wrestling. Ten count, you lose. But then Adam Pierce came in. He said, do you ladies want to continue this? And that's when you knew it. It's like, yeah, this... the the. You can't botch something like that and then just say, well, we'll restart it. Then you're just telling the whole universe you screwed up. If you're going to have a botch like that, and again, most botches, there's a 2% botch rule. Wrestling, I know it's predetermined. Um, it's not fake, it's real, but it's, it's predetermined you know who's going to win and lose. There's always that weird 2% botch, though. It happened once in the Chris Jericho Neville match. Every so often, once or twice a year, the two percent botch comes in. Referee can't do anything about it if he wants to keep it looking legitimate. Because if if the referees makes it look fake, yeah, that's they're supposed to impartial, cut it right down the middle. So yeah, once they did that, it got restarted. It's like, pff, botch. The whole, everything's in light of botch. Welcome to Botchamania. Welcome to the Royal, welcome to the, to the 
royal botch. Again, obvious bad stuff going on. Like, Sasha Banks dropping the belt because it slipped off her shoulder. That's realistic. That, that could that could legitimately happen. They didn't show that. They showed this on TV. Boo, Kevin Dunn. Boo, Adam Pierce. Boo, Paul Levesque. Boo, Stephanie McMahon. And if I'm going to boo anyone, boo Sonya Deville. Even though she probably had nothing to do with it, though. The one time I'm booing her, and she has actually nothing to do with it. Which is probably pathetic, but still. Let's see, I want to see if you can hear my... Yeah, that's better. Because I actually have my notebook covering up the, the speaker, so there's less reverb. Oh, unless I speak really loud. So it goes back. Two notches. But yeah, there was that whole botch ending. Charlotte looked like absolutely confused. She's like, huh? What happened here? You could just tell. <laughs> it, was, it was such a natural facial expression. But I'm getting way too into this match. Uh, Nia Jax is now in. Nia Jax never got in in the match. Uh, Lacey Evans. She had to do the laziest splash ever. She just... I don't... Back to NXT with Lacey Evans, I think. I don't know. She can talk. She has some swagger. She has personality. But oh my god, her in-ring skills are... Might actually be worse than mine. At least if I did a splash, I, I would jump and just not go, and fall on someone. I'd say, Ugh, ah, ah, and that crazy man look. So I could at least make it look good. <laughs> then Shannon uh, Bezo has Dana in, in, the, in the corner, beats her up a little bit. Dana eats, uh, eats some elbows. Again, the elbow breaker, Nia Jax comes in. Uh, that was okay. She did the Rikishi leg slap and and the sit-down miss. That was terrible. And we're not even getting to the... We've already seen the bad part yet. Uh, Mandy Rose comes in. The pump knee was pretty good. Then it's your typical spot fest, just like in any other six-person match. Charlotte chases Lacey out of the ring. To go into the stands. I don't know what was up with that. That was weird. Uh, Dana Brooke hit a standing, had a hit a running blockbuster. That was actually pretty cool. I was shocked at that. And then I don't know what happened with this. Um, Dana, she went for a move. Nia Jax like had her. Like a like literally like had her up in the power bomb. She was straight up vertical. I don't know what happened, but the leg fell. The one leg fell over the shoulder. I'll, I'll, I'll give. Listen, I will always give a wrestler credit when I think they did did her some credit. Nia Jax called the audible. It was a choke slam. The problem was, and you saw this right away. The back of Dana Brooks' head bounced. Off the ring. I don't know if I don't know if that was Nia's fault or Dana's fault. Dana has learned to tuck that chin, tuck that chin. Unless you're going for the Styles Clash, then you want to stretch. But yeah, like like she just was like their flat bonk. You could tell because like right away, her head hit the mat. She's like, oh, the Nia Jax hit the leg drop. I don't, again, I don't know if you can necessarily blame Nia Jax for that. Nia does have a tendency to overestimate her strength. But Dana Brooke's not necessarily small. Well, Dana Brooke might be top heavy, top and bottom heavy, but she's not necessarily small like a Kyrie Sane or Nikki Cross. Who else? Sasha Banks is, is pretty small. So, it's not like Dana, I don't know. I don't think you can necessarily pin this one on Nia Jax for a change. Maybe that leg drop with a little stank added on to it. Once she saw 
like, like he was she like literally like the first thing she did is like oh shit uh, Dana Brooke like, like out of like she didn't like out of it but you knew it, it was it wasn't a sell job it was like a legit sell it was like legit uh, so Nia Jax Shannon Baszler and Lacey Evans won again I'll tell you what it gets downgraded. This was a toast to match. I don't think I've ever given out two pieces of toast on any show. And this is the way the go home show to Raw starts off. Not necessarily good. Then we had Slapjack taking on Xavier Woods. This this got a little bit better. Xavier starts off with a missile drop kick. Chops does a big backdrop after Slapjack was in the corner. He comes out, big backdrop. That was really good looking. Slapjack hit a draping slingshot bulldog. That was unique. Again, if you're gonna do different stuff, I'll give you some credit. Slapjack and Xavier Woods are trying. They had to follow up that absolute garbage fire though of a opening. The opening segment was good, but the opening matches, the two opening matches. Dumpster fires. I wouldn't want to be the one that has to follow that. I mean, <laughs> even even the even the the piped in crowd sound bored. They were just like talking. It was terrible, actually. Uh, Slapjack and what was it? The big yep, the big chest by Xavier. A tilt roll side Russian leg sweep. That's always fun to see. Slapjack big European uppercut. Uh, Xavier hit the honor roll, and then the Shining Wizard for the win. I didn't even know that was his finisher move. But I didn't know this shi shi the Shiniest Wizard. The Shiniest Wizard was a finishing move. I thought the only person that used it as a finisher was my girl, Tegan Knox. I hope she gets better. She's like, she has like knee issues, though. That's, that's, does not bode well for her. But yeah, this match... Xavier Woods did win. That was a ham sandwich. And then, let's see here. T-Bar blindsides Xavier Woods. Uh, Xavier Woods gets caught in a double choke slam. Again, that did not look good either. I don't know. Maybe there is something about these wrestlers do need that live audience. Because if not, it just seems like, like they're practicing... Especially with the last match. That looked like a freaking walkthrough match. That was terrible. Ali comes in, gets a chair, cuts a promise, says, you know what you need to do. Bring me bring me Kofi Kingston. Or or, or t like send a message to Kofi Kingston, I'm gonna take his place in the Royal Rumble. Just like he took my place in the Elimination Chamber. A little bit of the backstage with Matt Riddle and R Truth. Oh, then we have the VIP lounge. Yeah, yeah, good there, yawning. Uh, MVP. MVP was given, since all the members of the Hurt Business, Bobby Lashley has a U.S. title, gold. Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin, they hold the tag team belt, gold. They gave MVP this huge, like, gold necklace. It said, T... H B. The hurt business. That makes sense. That looked good. Our truth came out and said, No, truth, happy birthday. And then it's like talking about like he's gonna get 24, 24 gold carrots. I don't know. And then of course the Loser Light Locker Room shows up. Tucker Knight, they've absolutely ruined heavy machinery and Tucker Knight. He's there, like, running around in, like, like shiny pants. It's bad as the Hurt Business beats up all the losers in the lo loser rock locker room. Matt Riddell sneaks up, has the uh, flaming knee or whatever it's called, big, big, big pump knee strike to MVP. Yeah, that upsets MVP. Then R-Truth sees AJ Styles backstage. Yeah. 
But twenty four seven champion is is a was a good idea. Now they're really beginning to. It's really beginning to get old. The fact that R Truth wins it backs constantly. It's a whole loser locker room. It'll be one thing if like AJ AJ. Then we had Sheamus versus John Morrison. This was. I'll tell you what. I'm going to give this a pretty high rating, mainly because of the classic wrestling. It was a amazing mat wrestling, and it was also great catch wrestling. Whenever you're going to incorporate all those styles, and they're and they're working for submissions, they're staying in close contact. It's not overly strike heavy. It's 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 a very technical match. I appreciate those matches. If they were there live, I mean, they tried to replicate a little bit, and I know it's going to be a dirty word, of what Chris Benoit and Kurt Angle did. They were good technical mat catch wrestling. They Sheamus and John Morrison were doing the same thing. They need to let John Morrison loose. They need to say, John Morrison, you're going to win a few matches. Go become Johnny Mundo again. So I'll tell you what, he's just becoming a jobber. Uh, even though this was a really good match, Eventually, uh, Sheamus had a big shoulder tackle. Uh, Morrison strike heavy the kicks. Sheamus again the big backdrop. Morrison is so good. He's so good on his feet. He has the ups. He's a star. He was a star in Lucha Underground. And he was Johnny Mundo. The, the the Johnny Mundo character fit him perfectly to a T. John Morrison, yeah. 10, 15 years ago was good. Now he's just, I'm getting paid. Yeah. I work once a week. I get paid. Actually, probably just once every two weeks. I still think they do some tapings. Uh, let's see here. What next? Um, Morrison, again, he, he fought through a couple moves. That was really good. Again, that big... Drop kick to the knee. That looked amazing. That looked planned. It looked like it looked planned, but it looked like he knew it. it. It didn't look fake. It was planned, or he improvised really well. I mean, he, you could tell he targeted that knee. That was great. Then he starts to work over the knee of Sheamus again. Goes after the leg again. Morrison goes after the legs of Sheamus. Morrison uh, going to jujitsu, passing the guard. That was amazing. Again, putting the knee bar. Sheamus was a little bit too strong for them. Again, the double axe handle blows, the cloverleaf, the white noise. John Morrison gets pinned. John Morrison is eating pins left and right, man. It was still a good match, though. It was a cheeseburger match. Wow, I have a lot of notes, too. Maybe this video might get edited Tuesday night. I don't know. We'll see. Um, then the Miz, then Miz comes out to talk some trash. Uh, Miz and Morrison taking on Sheamus. Miz and Morrison, for the most part, they begin to pick apart Sheamus. Sheamus has already had a heck of a match, but he's just getting beat up a little bit more. Uh, Sheamus sends Miz over the top, beats up Morrison a little bit. Again, most of this following the fact that Sheamus has to keep on fighting off Miz and Morrison. Eventually, Miz eats the ten. Beats of the Belfry or, or whatever it is. Morrison tries to, to break it up. But no, now he, it's time for his 10 beats of the bel Belfry. Sheamus has an amazing flying clothesline from the top rope to the, to the floor. Good stuff. But yeah, I just could not get excited about this match. Definitely a different match than what we just saw. Morrison eats a bro kick. Miss, however, being the opportunistic heel that he is, hits the skull crushing finale. Pins Sheamus. You could have seen this. This is a can of soup match. And it's a little bit of Charlotte Flair and Ric Flair. This is like the bit they did, and I remember it in the 90s, where Triple H was teaching Sonny how to escape a waist lock. Uh, Sonny was bent over at Triple H's crotch. 
Stephanie walked in. Stephanie, Mc Stephanie was not happy. The same thing was going on with Ric Flair, Lacey Evans. <sighs> They're just rehashing things. Lacey Evans is told to leave. She leaves. Uh, Charlotte confronts her father, Ric Flair. It's like, listen, you spent money on everyone but me, your daughter. Lacey Evans then clocks Charlotte in the back of the head and runs her into the um, kind of fake molding there at the trop. Again, I've seen it before, and everyone on YouTube knew what it was. I guess it's okay. They haven't done that in a... I don't know. Last time I saw it was the only time it mattered. Was The original is still the best. Again, I, I'd like to have Sonny bent over when I had her in a waist lock. Oh! Then we had AJ Styles versus R-Truth. This was a pretty quick start. AJ goes right after R-Truth. And AJ's so good when he eats that big back body drop. Um, AJ says, yeah, I'll show you how it's done. I'm going to send you over the top rope. R-Truth reverses that. Um, AJ Styles quickly gets back in, hits a drop to a hold. R-Truth comes like inches away from nailing the rope. Hits the ground. Of course, that's a, the good thing is the camera work and R-Truth's facial expression was so good. When he looked up, he just sees this, this big Amos staring at him. And he had that look. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Then it was just AJ Styles after that. He missed the phenomenal forearm, didn't matter. Uh, R Truth went for the five knuckle shuffle, hit that. He could not get the uh, AA. And again, remember you forgot the f you forgot moves one, two, and three. He went to right to step number four for the fourth move of Doom. And the fifth move of Doom's always the attitude adjustment. So again. You know, our truth wasn't going to hit it. Uh, AJ slipped off, got them, got our truth in the calf calf crusher. Pretty predictable match. Um, AJ Styles, by all rights, should be the twenty four seven champion. He doesn't need that title. He should probably be nowhere near that title. That was really a ham sandwich of a match. And that's saying something that AJ Styles could probably have a ham sandwich match against a broom um oscar then had a little promo we have to see evil nazi oscar we need evil nazi kana to come out yeah kana to come out she has to be changed by this there was a randy orton recap and a little bit of a alexa play alexa's playground <laughs> fbi should show up just say hey listen you really shouldn't portray alexa bliss as like a 12 year old schoolgirl. Doesn't look good. Oh, yeah. Two big major announcements. One's okay. One's meh. I just realized this. I'm actually because it's in my notes here. Um, unfortunately, the brother of Vincent McMahon passed away. He was 77. Pretty good, pretty decent age. Um, my condolences go out to the McMahon family. I'm sure they're dealing with a lot, of, with a lot of stuff right now. Um, I just hope you can get through it. Only thing you can say, 77, still pretty much a full good life. I'm sure he, I'm sure he enjoyed some of the highs and lows of watching his brother take over his father's wrestling uh, enterprise, becoming one of the most dominant wrestling companies in the U.S if not the world, again, my condolences go out to the McMahons. No one ever heard of the brother McMahon, so it's just one of those weird news things. Again, you feel bad. Again, my condolences go out to the, to the whole McMahon family. And then the second part of the news is that, yes, WWE sold itself to... NBC, I think, whichever one's the, the peak. I forget which one the Peacock Network. I forget. It's one of the, like the original networks between NBC, ABC, and CBS. I want to say it's NBC, but they sold themselves to NBC. So I don't know what's going to happen. Thankfully, I watch my pro wrestling from WWE on pirated channels. So I don't have to worry about that. And this will be interesting because I, I wonder if... And I, I think it was it used to be ABC's Wide World of Sports. I wonder if NBC 
we'll do like a daytime thing. Especially now that the football season's kind of winding down. Basketball's going to, meh. So, so we'll see what happens. They might have eventually some free wrestling shows on. Who knows? Only time will tell. Again, so that's the dun, 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 major announcement. Then we had Matt Riddle in his gauntlet match. He first starts off taking on Sheldon Benjamin. This was actually a pretty good match. Again, because of every gauntlet match, I'm going to give it its individual ratings since there are three, three of them. I guess three ratings. And then a fourth rating as a whole rating. So Matt Riddle versus Sheldon Benjamin was pretty good. I thought it actually was pretty good. It starts off, again, strike heavy. Both of these have that mixed martial arts background. It was a big slap jock after Sheldon caught the knee from Matt Riddell. Uh, the, the knees of Sheldon Benjamin looked so good, so crisp, so realistic. The Muay Thai clinch is good. Drops Matt Riddell on top of the rope, gives him a big knee to the short ribs. That has to sting. Matt eventually, uh, a Riddle gets, uh, I call him Matt because it's easier to say. A riddle just sounds weird. It sounds like the Riddler. He's, he's not necessarily the Riddler either. Uh, he gets on the uh, stretch. Stretch him out. That was pretty good. Then they switch positions. Shelton gets caught in the guillotine choke. Um, some uh, Cedric Alexander kind of tried to distract Referee, he did it actually initially the first time because Sheldon Benjamin got rolled up. So Cedric Alexander jumps on the ring, distracts the referee. However, unbeknownst to Cedric Alexander, Sheldon Benjamin counters that and costs Sheldon Benjamin the win. That was actually a le legitimate, uh, legit screw up though. That that was not planned. That was or well, it was planned, but yeah, not necessarily the way he wanted to go. So that was really good. To, that was really good to see. Instead, Matt Riddle um, gets up into the electric chair position, does the Okada roll on Sheldon Benjamin. This first part of the gauntlet match, it was good. Cheeseburger match. And then MVP got in the ring. He started to argue. He said, hey, both you two shut up and watch this. And while he was yapping at both Sheldon Benjamin and... Cedric Alexander on the outside, he got rolled up into a heel hook. That was the end of that match. Golly gee, Willikers. So that was actually a piece of toast. Then Cedric Alexander gets in. He says, you better get your business done. Uh, heavy fist by both. That was good. Cedric again, big. Yeah, Cedric has some ups too. I'd love to see a match between Cedric Alexander and AJ Styles. That would just be so fun. Uh, Cedric Alexander had the big drop kick. That was really good to see. Uh, Riddell comes back. He, he's in a waist lock, so again, he has to throw the back elbows to get out. Cedric counters with a DDT. Um, uh, Matt Riddell again hits that belly to belly suplex, which is really overhead belly to belly, just looks great. Uh, they trade blows some more. Uh, Riddell gets gets in a German suplex. Cedric hits a brain buster to counter that. Brain buster should be finishing moves. You drop someone on their head like that, that should be that should be it. Uh, Riddell hit a flying triangle on Cedric, tried to counter that into a power bomb. Eventually, Riddell had a, a modified Okada roll. That actually wound up pinning Cedric Alexander. Again, a good cheeseburger match. Then, of course, as predicted, Bobby Lashley jumps Matt Riddell. I think I'm going to have to put a notation here. Matt Riddell wins U.S. Championship. Because, again, Bobby Lashley stands tall. Matt Riddell is not tall. So, yeah. Um, overall, the whole gauntlet match... If even if you take away the MVP part, he was just there as a filler. I mean, MVP's not doing any serious wrestling nowadays, and if he does, it's in a multi-person tag match, or he's only making like a, a very short stint in a match. I'll say, you know what? Overall, though, it was still a good cheeseburger of a match.
<laughs> yeah, it's getting late. I might work on the editing of the show tomorrow. So yeah, don't expect anything from me anytime soon. It's just that kind of chaotic week. I needed some enjoyment. Especially after this show. Then there was an edge recap. Ed hits, edge hits a promo. He sounds tired. Unfortunately, he sounds tired and old. And he's going to be in the Royal Rumble. Then we have Asuka and Alexa Bliss. Um, Asuka takes control early. Alexa does some striking. I'm not really a fan of these back-to-back -back matches, although I understood this, because there's really one saving grace about this entire show. Wait for it. Uh, Alexa does some striking again. Then all of a sudden, we see Alexa on a hobby horse in the middle of the ring. Hobby! Again, kind of creepy. Then she gets Alexa, um, Alexa Bliss gets Oscar in the re in the chin lock, and she's all smiling. Yee! Then of course the lights. Uh, Oscar, uh, uh, she begins. She does her little move set, uh, shoulder tackle into the uh, the lifting knee to the hip attack, the big German suplex. Alexa Bliss then transforms into evil in, into. Um, Alexa Bliss from NXT is absolutely terrified and then she ch changes again and she becomes creepy Alexa and then wait for it there's one person standing right behind Alexa Bliss and that's Randy Orton bravo Randy Orton you saved this segment you saved this match you saved this whole show because Randy Orton RKO's Alexa with the WooTube audience has been wanting. Yes, 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 for a while. So Randy Orton saved the show, the RKO. I, just because of that, that made me pop. I think it made the whole WooTube audience pop. That was This was a cheeseburger match. And Oscar Silver retains her title. And that was Raw. Oh, I'm going to give this Raw a can of soup rating. It was not good. WWE, this is not how you want your go-home shows to go. This show literally makes me not want to watch SmackDown. It doesn't make me want to watch the Royal Rumble either. And it's, gonna, and it's one of their big four shows. Yeah, if this was like, uh, no, Money in the Bank's pretty big. If this was like, uh, Great Balls of Fire, would be like, yeah, whatever. It, it's it's going to be a match show anyway. This is one of your marquee shows. You have to sell it like it's going to be a marquee show. You just can't put on this dumpster fire and expect people to like it. This might be, with the exception... And, and I'll, I'll say this, with the exception of that last segment when, with Randy Orton, this might be one of the worst Raws ever. And that's going pretty deep. Not worst segment. Worst segment is Bailey, This Is Your Life. Overall, this whole show, again, was a can of soup. And that was it. Um, I'm going to shower up and go to sleep. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, this show might go on maybe Wednesday. Um, I have to do some editing. Unfortunately, I do need some sleep. And I have to go to work tomorrow. So I have to travel. So I have stuff to do. I'm skipping hoboing. I've already collected 118 pieces of aluminum. And I have a few more in the truck. So yeah, we'll we'll see how things go. Again, this is this is just a mad mad week. But I'd like to thank you, my YouTube audience, for watching and putting up with me.